Hey, welcome back to the Edron Workshop. I'm Luke, and today I'm going to be pitting four 18 inch electronic ride cymbal pads against each other to help you work out which is the best 18 inch ride cymbal for you. I've got the Roland CY18DR, commonly referred to as the Roland Digital Ride, the ATV ADC18, the Lemon 18 inch ride cymbal, and the Gaver CP18 here, and I'm going to measure each of these 18 inch rides by these critical categories construction and design, triggering feel and playability module compatibility and price. And I'll also throw in a volume and stick noise comparison at the end. Just for the record, the Roland, Lemon and ATV symbols are all my own that I purchased myself, whereas the Gaver symbol is part of the review kit that Gaver kindly sent to me and I'll be returning it after I've done this video. And unfortunately, at the time of filming, I haven't been able to try out the F-Note 18 inch ride. So I haven't been able to include the F-Note symbol in this video. Let's take a look at the pricing of each of these symbols first because I feel like that gives us a good reference point when deciding between the other factors. So the most expensive ones here are definitely the Roland CY18DR and the ATV ADC18. In the UK they can both be found anywhere between about £410 and £450. In other territories the price similarities tend to be about the same but sometimes one is more expensive than the other. For example in Europe Drumtech currently has the ATV symbols at €485 Euros, with the Roland Digital Ride under it at €469. Euros. In the US eDrum Center has the ATV symbol for $449 and the Roland at $499. But in a nutshell, these two rides are comfortably the most expensive options and they've both got disadvantages and advantages when pitted against each other as we'll see soon. The pricing of the Gaver CP18 gets a bit weird regionally. At the time of writing, in the UK it's available for around £330 from one seller and in Europe it appears to be about €350, Euros, so a solid $100 so cheaper than Roland or ATV. In the US, eDrum Center currently have it up on sale for $300. The Gaver Music USA store has it listed for $365, but it's out of stock. And Kraft have it for about $470. And then finally, the Lemon 18 inch ride. Now, this symbol, along with their other symbols, has become really popular recently thanks to its low price point. They sell for around £50, $69, or €60 Euros from their supply on Alibaba, which is incredibly cheap for pretty much any electronic symbol, never mind an 18 inch one. The shipping does knock the price up a fair bit, I think I paid about £89 in total including shipping, which is a pretty big jump from the base price, however it's still about a fifth to a quarter of the price of any of these others. I have got a review of this 18 inch lemon ride and the 15 inch lemon rides on this channel if you want more information, but there's no denying that this starts off the lemon ride with a very appealing advantage. So the Lemon Ride is the cheapest, but is there a catch? Well, construction-wise, it is pretty good for the price point. It does feel cheaper in the hand than the other symbols, but to be honest, that's understandable. It has a little bit of flex, but definitely not as much as the others. The rubber is also noticeably less premium feeling than the others, with a little more movement around the edge if you press down on it. This isn't something that I can really criticise too heavily at this price point, because it doesn't seem to affect the playability. The rubber also has this sort of faux lathing design on it, similar to Roland symbols, and I think it looks decent enough, nothing too intrusive. Unfortunately, the bell is the smallest of the bunch and it's also the least raised. Compounding this is the fact that the symbol is also really flat compared to the others. All of this can make it more difficult to aim for the bell zone than the other symbols, as you'll see shortly. On the underside, it's very basic, but it does the job. There's a jack box with the two output jacks, and on the mounting section, there's a cutout for a Roland style rotation stopper, which is really handy. Mine didn't come with a rotation stopper but I believe they're included in the box nowadays. There's also a lip of plastic around the edge where the rubber ends. It can be noticeable when you're going for cymbal chokes. It hasn't really caused me any problems personally but I do think it would be nicer if it was a bit shallower.
Next up is the Gaver CP18. The construction of this symbol is really thin and it doesn't feel cheap but it is noticeably the lightest in this shootout and it has quite a lot of flex to it which is nice. The rubber has a nice feel to it, it might be a little bit harder than say the Roland or the ATV but it feels good and it does have the biggest bell of any of these available symbols which I think is brilliant. It's probably the most visually striking design on this list too. It's got a groove pattern etched into the rubber which I'm pretty indifferent on but some people will like it. The rubber on the Gaver symbols also seems to dent a little bit over time which doesn't seem to be affecting the playability but it is noticeable. The underside is also very different to the other symbols. It's a little bit busier looking but it is underneath so it doesn't really matter and I think that this construction is probably what helps with keeping the weight down and allowing for that extra flex. There is a ring around here as well where you can see the three piezos located and there's also the jack box with two jack outputs more on that one later. The rotation stopper is on the top of the symbol and it's quite a unique one. There's a plastic cutout inserted into the bell and there's an attachment for the symbol stands which slots through preventing rotation. The ATV ADC18 has the most noticeably slim profile out of all of these symbols, and although it's not as light as the Gaver symbol, it does have the most flexible edge. ATV were hoping to get the most acoustic-like flex out of their symbols, and you can certainly feel the difference when you lay into it compared to the others. It's got a well-sized bell, a nice curvature to the surface, and the rubber feels top quality. There's no pattern on the top, it's entirely flat, and it's also got a matte finish which looks really sleek, but it does show up still marks a little bit quicker than the other symbols. And the logo is also the least intrusive. It's just a very small print on the edge of the symbol. Underneath the symbol it's another clean design. There's a ring here that all of the internals are tucked away under. The three piezos are in here and the jacks connect directly to this too, so there's no bulky jack box weighing the symbol down on one side. There's no rotation stopper system to be found here either. The symbol was designed to freely move in any direction and it can be mounted on a regular symbol stand with a sleeve and symbol felts like an acoustic symbol. One problem that I have run into with the design of this symbol is that it seems to have a bit of a vibration issue. Unfortunately this can lead to some triggering oddities which I'll get into later. I believe there's been a few revisions to these symbols over time as well so if you've got one with a newer serial number you might not run into the same problems. There's also a chance that this symbol might develop micro dents over time. Mine has some but you do have to look really hard for them to find them and they don't affect the playability in any way. There's also an imprint of the edge switch that's developed around the symbol over time and it's most obvious on the section that I've played on the most. When you consider the cost of these symbols it's a real shame that any of these problems do exist. And finally the Roland CY18DR. The construction and the feel of this symbol is top notch in my opinion, however there is one thing that I'm going to need to mention shortly. It's the heaviest of these symbol pads I believe, but to be honest you don't really notice it that much when you're playing it. It doesn't feel too heavy or weird to play on because it's also pretty flexible. The bell is a touch smaller than the ATV symbol, but it's still a good size and it's well raised. It's got the usual faux lathing texture on top like other Roland symbols and the rubber is great quality. On the underside things are a little bit different. Somewhat similar to the ATV symbol is this circular section around the mounting hole which contains some of the internals and the output. There are no jacks here, this symbol uses a USB connector and the USB cable comes out from here with the ability to tuck it away neatly underneath this circular section. There's a function button on the bottom of the symbol here too which currently doesn't have any use but it apparently might do in the future. In the mounting section there's a groove cut out for the usual Roland rotation rotation stopper and across the bottom there are a couple of plastic arms that extend out from the middle to the edge. I believe there's a piezo underneath each of these to pick up your hits towards the edge and then there's another two piezos under here for the bell and the bow. The edge switch is underneath the very edge of the symbol and the bell switch is underneath the edge of the bell. There's also a touch sensor underneath the rubber going across the entire bow of the symbol and there's a microprocessor in here somewhere as well which deals with all of the signals before sending them out over USB. Overall I think 
think that the Roland feels the most premium and expensive, which it should do for the price, frankly. And although the ATV symbol comes pretty close, this generally feels more hardwearing and sturdy. However, there is a build-related issue that I feel the need to comment on because if I don't, then people will definitely bring it up in the comments. I do have first-hand experience with this issue as well. I'm not just commenting on baseless conjecture. The issue for me was that there was a spot on the bow, and I think it was around about here, where it would be triggering the edge anytime I played it instead of the bow. And at first I thought maybe I was imagining it, or maybe I had my settings wrong, or I was clipping the edge anytime I was going for that section. However, after about six months or so, it actually became raised in that spot. There was a little bit of a lump. So I had to contact Roland Support, and they took it in under warranty because it was less than a year old. It ended up being replaced on warranty as an unknown fault, and Roland were really quick with the turnaround, and they were great when handling it. I think it only took about a week to get the new symbol. Some other people have reported this issue, and I don't think I've seen anybody else talking about it becoming raised, but it does seem to be in the same spot that my symbol was having those problems. Fortunately for me, I've had this replacement for about four years now, and I've never had the problem again. So although it seems like it might not have been a one-off, it definitely doesn't affect every single symbol. I do believe that if you have a problem with it, Roland will sort it out, so it's best to get in contact. And now we get to probably the most important part for a lot of people, the triggering and playability of each of these symbols. I'm going to start off with the Roland. Now, out of the box, this Roland symbol already triggered really well, but once I dived into the module settings and got it set up for my own playing style, it's probably the best ride response that I've ever had out of a ride symbol or module. Whatever your opinions are of Roland's internal module sounds, the trigger response and dynamics of this symbol are really immersive. It supports positional sensing, so it will follow your playing up towards the bell and back towards the edge, and it's probably the most accurate positional sensing that I've used. Playing closer to the edge and getting more wash or going up towards the bell to get more body in your ride sound is really satisfying. Even if you don't want to use the internal sounds, the module will send the positional data out to use with software like Superior Drummer 3. It's a very sensitive symbol and it will pick up even the tiniest of taps if you bring the threshold down, and the bell sensitivity is the best that Roland's ever managed. In fact, it's by far the best on this list. The response on the edge is really accurate as well, and ever since getting this replacement pad, I've never had any problems with the bow, bell or edge mistriggering. The TD27, 50 and 50X modules give you a lot of control over the various parameters of this symbol as well. For example, you can use the position adjust parameter to change how it reacts to your position. You can also choose how quickly or slowly the choking reacts with the choke sends option. 
The digital ride also has the ability to be choked by just placing your hand on the surface, which is something I've never done on an acoustic cymbal, so it is a bit of a marketing gimmick. However, it does have the added bonus of making the choking really, really easy because it knows that your thumb or finger is there. All of the digital pads also allow you to access a higher level of velocity than the analog pads. You can go up to 127 plus 32 with the digital pads, whereas you're capped at 127 with with a regular analog pad. The stick response on the digital ride is really nice in my opinion. The bow has a good rebound and crashing on it is really satisfying because the cymbal has a decent amount of flex. There are also no noticeable hotspots on the surface of this cymbal. One of the few downsides of this symbol is that the playable area is only one half of the surface and that's the side that's closest to you. The opposite side where the Roland logo is won't give you proper sensitivity and you won't be able to get an edge zone past the halfway mark. This was actually the case with most electronic symbols up until recently and personally I've never really felt limited by it. Because it uses a rotation stopper I've never really felt the need to play over the other side of the symbol. However there are a couple of symbols in this video that can be played all over. The lemon symbol actually surprised me in this area. It really punches above its weight in terms of trigger response. It's very sensitive and it definitely outputs a bit hotter than the other symbols. However, reducing the gain or sensitivity a bit sorts that out and it shouldn't top out too early on most modules. Playing on the bow zone works really well, the edge triggers reliably for me and the bell zone is much better than a lot of the older Roland symbols and it's pretty much on par with the Gaver and the ATV. You don't get the lightest possible touches but it's pretty accurate overall. There is unfortunately a bit of a hot spot on this symbol and it's right over where the piezo sits. It is reasonably easy to avoid, but it does bring the experience down a little bit. Also, the positional sensing didn't work accurately for me on Roland modules. It's actually quite reliably the wrong way round. It gives me center towards the edge a lot of the time and edge towards the center. On my e-drum in, the positional sensing was still hit or miss, even when using the new Lemon preset that's been added to one of the recent software versions. I tried out the positional sensing with the stock setting, which uses an algorithm designed for Yamaha and Lemon pads. It seemed to be pretty accurate over to the left and right hand side of the cymbals. However, as I move towards the center of the bow where I would normally play, it still seemed to be reversed similar to the Roland module. Otherwise, it played really well on the e-drum in using both output jacks, though I did reduce the gain because it seemed a bit hot on the stock settings. There's also a function on the e-drum in called bell sense, which is designed to detect bell hits even if you're only using one cable. Using the lemon symbol with one cable and the bell sense function, I got pretty reliable bell triggering using the CY8 bell sense settings. It didn't pick up the bell every time, on lower velocities, but most medium strength hits and upwards were usually accurate enough to be usable. Like the Roland symbols, the playable area of the Lemon symbol is just this front half that's closer to you. Now if you do play over the other side, the sensitivity isn't that bad, but you won't get an edge zone over that side of the symbol.
For me, the main thing bringing down the playability of this symbol is that flatter profile and smaller bell zone that I mentioned earlier. These two factors combine together to make playing the bell more difficult than the other symbols. Of course, you can adjust the height and the angle of this symbol to make it a little bit easier to aim for, but overall, this design makes it more difficult and cumbersome than it needs to be. This symbol also has the most solid feel under the stick. This could be a plus or a minus depending on what you like, but I think that it feels a little bit clunky when compared to the others, especially on the edge. However, you do have to weigh all of these things up with the price point of this symbol. The ATV ride is right up there with Roland Symbol in terms of feel when you're playing on it. The stick rebound is really nice, the bell zone is great to play on, and the edge probably has the most satisfying crash out of all of these symbols due to the way that it flexes. It does feel noticeably softer than the other symbols, but I quite like the way that it sells that playing through kind of feeling, like when you use a glancing blow on the edge of an acoustic symbol. The ATV ride can also be played 360 degrees, the entire surface of the symbol is sensitive, and there's an edge switch that runs all the way around the outside except for one tiny little spot where it joins. The bell doesn't pick up the very, very lightest of hits, but until the digital ride, this symbol had the best bell response of pretty much any analogue ride. Unfortunately, the edge response of this symbol lets it down a little bit. It's not technically bad, but the angle at which you have to approach the edge of the symbol is very specific. You pretty much have to make sure that you come down at it from above. There have been many arguments over the years about whether or not that's okay. Some will raise the point that you should never be playing directly into the edge anyway, just like you shouldn't do on an acoustic cymbal. However, this just isn't an issue on most other cymbal pads. I also mentioned an issue earlier on about the pad vibrating after hitting it. Unfortunately, this isn't just an audible thing, it also affects the triggering and sometimes I get a few ghost triggers or light unintended hits after a hard hit. This isn't too difficult to dial out with a little bit of tweaking to things like threshold, re-trigger cancel and mask time, however it is a little bit of a balance to make sure that intended hits don't get cancelled out as well. This symbol also works reasonably well with the positional sensing on my Roland TD50X. It's not 100% accurate but I get pretty decent results on both the CY15R and the CY16RT presets. On the eDrum in 10, I also got usable results with the positional sensing using the Roland algorithm, which makes sense since it worked reasonably well on my Roland module. If I played directly in line with one of the three piezos, it was really accurate. However, if I played somewhere between the piezos, it did drop off a little bit. Using both output jacks on a Roland style three zone cymbal pad type, the overall trigger response was good, but as with the TD50X, I did have to dial out the ghost triggers. This is really easy to do though with the eDrum in's decay settings. When I swapped over to only one cable and used the bell sense function set to the CY13R setting, I could get accurate bell triggering with only a few very light hits registering as bow hits now and again. There are some mild hot spots up towards the bell where the three piezos sit, However, as you can see, they're not that dramatic and because they're right up by the bell, it doesn't really interfere with my playing all that much.
Once I started using the Gaver CP18 ride on my Roland and Mimic modules, I really started to warm to it. In terms of triggering, I did need to boost the sensitivity a little bit. It does output a little bit colder than the other symbols, but once I did that, it was sensitive and responded well. The rebound on the bow is maybe not quite as nice as the Roland or ATV to me, but the flex of the cymbal when you lay into it is pleasing, and it feels pretty good once you get going with your headphones on. It can also be played 360 degrees with the head switch going all the way around the outside like the ATV cymbal, which I didn't realise until I'd been using it for a little while. The bell and the edge response are both pretty accurate. Again, like the lemon and the ATV symbols, the very lightest hits don't get picked up, but it's no worse really than either of those. I also couldn't get the positional sensing to work properly with this symbol on the Roland modules. On the eDrum in 10, using the Yamaha and Lemon algorithm, I could actually get pretty decent positional sensing out of the Gaver symbol. I did have to adjust the position area a bit, and it wasn't 100% accurate in every location, but it was definitely usable. Because the Gaver ride can be used with just one cable on the eDrum in using a Yamaha pad type, I didn't bother testing the two cable mode as I could get all three zones as accurately as I hoped. However, it was only when I hooked up to the eDrum in that I realised that the Gaver symbol also suffers from a bit of a vibration and false triggering issue like the ATV symbol. It was easy to dial these out using the eDrumin's scan, hold and decay settings, and overall the trigger response was comparable to the Roland and Mimic modules. The dynamic response of the Gaver symbol is a little bit shakier than the others, and it's mostly because there's some pretty noticeable hotspots on the surface of this symbol. If you keep in mind where the hotspots are, you can sort of play around them, but it's not really ideal. You can also use dynamic curves to smoothen out the response, but it will never fully solve it. It doesn't make the symbols unplayable, but it is noticeably worse than the others. It's a real shame that these few problems exist, because if they didn't, then I would definitely be recommending this as the underdog option. So at this point you might have picked out an 18 inch ride symbol that appears to tick all of your boxes, but there is another consideration. Can you take this symbol with you across other modules and upgrades that you might make in the future? By far the most compatible symbol on this list is the Gaver CP18. When using it on a Gaver module it can be used as a three zone symbol, so bow, edge and bell all over one cable. This is like the Yamaha approach and I love it and I wish every manufacturer just used this approach. In fact I'm pretty sure it's wired exactly the same as a Yamaha symbol because it works with all three zones over one cable on my Pearl Mimic Pro and the eDrum in 10 when I'm using a Yamaha preset. And there's no need to worry if you don't own a module that supports three zones over one cable. Gaver have handily included a second output jack which lets you swap to two cable wiring. If you need an 18 inch symbol pad that's compatible across a bunch of different modules then this might swing it for you. Next in terms of compatibility you've got the ATV and the Lemon Rides. If you've got a module that supports three zones over two cables like a Roland module, an Alesis Strike, a Pearl Mimic Pro and plenty of others, then you should be able to get three zones over two cables out of either of these symbols. There is one slight quirk in terms of compatibility with the Lemon symbols that I do need to mention. Sometimes the internal wiring might need to be flipped for it to work properly on a particular module. I showed off the solution to this in my 15 inch Lemon symbol review and it's really simple. It just requires opening the bottom of the symbol and moving 
having a cable connector from one side to the other. Personally, because it's so simple, I don't see it as a big problem considering the price, but it is something to keep in mind. And finally, the least compatible symbol is the Roland Digital Ride. This ride has no jack connectors and it only outputs over USB, so it can only be used with the Roland TD27, TD50 and TD50X modules. You can technically get it to work in some other ways. I made a couple of videos about some options a while back that I'll link to in the description for more information, but there are limitations to these approaches and I really don't recommend using them unless you happen to have all of that gear already. Now let's have a listen to the volumes of each of these pads. I've tried to do this as fairly as possible, but do keep in mind these volumes are only relative to each other and the other pads on my kit. I've covered a lot in this video, so before we go, I'm going to quickly summarise who I think each of these symbols is best for. If you have a Roland TD27, TD50 or TD50X module, you don't need compatibility with any other module and you see yourself staying within the Roland ecosystem in the future, then the Roland CY18DR is going to give you the best possible ride symbol response that you can get from your module. It is a lot of money to invest in a single pad and you can get decent results with other pads too. However, if you want the the best that you can possibly get then this is worth it in my opinion. Even more so if you get one as part of a full kit or a module upgrade pack rather than buying it on its own. If you're on a budget and you just want a simple upgrade in size from your current ride symbol pad then the Lemon 18 inch ride is a really good option. Overall the playability is great and the downsides can be overlooked for the price, at least I think so. The jury is still out as to how well they're going to hold up over time since they've not been available for that long but if you're happy to replace them if anything does happen to go wrong, you're still going to be spending less money until you've bought about four or five of them. If you want a symbol that can be used across a bunch of different modules with different wiring styles, the Gava CP18 is pretty attractive. The hot spotting issue definitely lets it down a bit, but the price is much more inviting than the ATV symbol, and you might be able to overlook that problem if you really need that flexibility. And finally, the ATV ADC18 was the king of analog ride pads and the definitive rival to the Roland Digital Ride for some time. The vibration issue and the price point do unfortunately bring it down a little bit nowadays in my estimation, but it is still a very satisfying ride pad to play on and it comes with the benefits like decent positional sensing. I hope you enjoyed this shootout, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and if you liked any of the sounds that were used in this video, they're all taken from custom kits that are available on my store over at theedrumworkshop.com. I've got custom kits and samples available for multiple modules so go check that out. There are full demo videos on this channel of all of my kits and there's also plenty of other e-drum content. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!